Hi everyone. Actually, I wanted to make this video already a few years ago. I saw a movie that involved some magic, and there was one scene in that movie where the rain was stopped in midair and even reversed so that it flew upwards. One moment I realized that I actually know what's the idea behind this magic trick, and I wanted to repeat it. So what you can see here is my attempt to do that. Actually, this video is unedited, but this illusion is really hard to film, especially with a regular smartphone. This is why you see all that flickering and weird stripes, but in real life you don't see that, so this illusion looks a lot cooler. So how exactly this illusion is done? To repeat this illusion, you will need few things. First of all, you will need a light source that you can turn on and off. Second thing will be a water source that you can control. And the third thing is an observer that can be either a video camera or your eye. Now let's imagine that we are reducing the water stream until we get to individual water droplets. Once we have done that, this is the moment where the light source starts to play its role. Let's imagine for a moment that we are in a dark room. If we will turn on the light source just for a brief moment, we will see the exact location where each water droplet is located. After that, we will turn the light source off. Now let's assume that it takes 10 milliseconds for each individual water droplet to fall distance d. If we will turn back on light source after exactly 10 milliseconds, this water droplet will be in the same place where this water droplet was previously. That way we will have a feeling that the water droplets haven't moved and they are just levitating in midair. As long as we are continuing to turn the light source on and off at the exact frequency, we are keeping the illusion going. Now if we want to move the water droplets upwards or downwards, we simply have to slightly change the frequency at which the water droplets are falling or at which the light source is turned on and off. Okay, now when you know how this illusion is working, I will show you the electrical scheme that I used to control the light source. For this project I used an LED lamp that you can see here, and it already contained an LED driver that served as a power source. Here you can see the LED driver in combination with transistor and Arduino board to control the current that flows through the LED lamp. I also placed two capacitors here, because the signal that was coming from the LED driver was quite noisy, and I needed something to remove the noise. On the other side of the Arduino board you can see the potentiometer that I used to adjust the frequency at which the LED lamp was turned on and off. One pin of the potentiometer was connected to plus 5 volts, the other pin was connected to 0 volts, and the third pin was connected to Arduino's analog input. Based on the voltage level that we have on analog input 0, that is adjusted using the potentiometer, the switching speed of pin 13 is changed accordingly. Therefore, also the switching speed of the LED lamp is changed. I have to add a disclaimer here. As you can see, in my case, the LED driver is connected to 220 volts. So you should replicate the circuit only in case if you really understand what you are doing. Of course, you can always replace the LED lamp with LEDs that require slower power and the power source with some batteries. In that case, you won't risk electrocuting yourself. The next thing that we should discuss is the program that I used for the Arduino board. I won't go through each line of code, but I will give you a brief overview of this program so that you would have a better understanding what's going on here. As you can see, I am using the standard Arduino software. These are all the variables that are used in this program. Here I am declaring which of the analog inputs will be used for the potentiometer, as you can see in this case it will be A0, and here I am declaring which of the pins will be used as digital output to control the transistor, 
In this case it will be pin 13. In this part of the code we are configuring pin 13 as an output and we are starting the serial communication with the computer. Now we go to the main part of the program. Here you can see a for loop and what it does basically it is used as a simple filter. A lot of times the original analog signal was changing without even touching the potentiometer so I needed some way to stabilize it. So what I'm doing here I'm reading the analog signal 10 times and I'm adding up all those readings to a variable called voltage. Then I'm dividing that sum by 10 that way getting the stabilized value. And because its type is integer the result is already rounded. In this case if the Arduino will read for example 9 times a value 170 and 1 time a value 171 in the result I will still get the value 170 that way returning the more stable value and the less stable value will be ignored. And now we get to the if statement and basically what the if statement does in case the light delay value is changed it outputs a new light delay value in the serial monitor as you can see it here right now. I would say that the only purpose for this if statement is debugging just check if everything works properly. And the last part of this code turns on the LED light for one millisecond and then turns it off for a certain period of time that is based on the analog voltage reading from the analog input. So that's a brief overview of this program. In case if you want to play around with it, you can either rewrite it from this video, but I will also leave a link in the video description where you can simply go and copy and paste it. Now I will show you the setup while making this video. Here you can see the power connections for the Arduino board and for the LED lamp. Next comes the LED driver. Here you can see the Arduino Uno and the breadboard with the transistor and potentiometer. And here is the LED lamp that I used. Now let's look at the setup of my water source. As you can see I am not using a regular tap because it turns out that it is really hard to accomplish a uniform stream of water droplets that would not shift in frequency. This is the reason why I'm using this arguably complex setup. I even made a customized cup for the water bottle to reduce the distortions while refilling the water reservoir. I added a tubing and a sponge inside the cup to accomplish something similar to a laminar water stream. One of the last things that I want to show you is a video where I'm trying to adjust the frequency at which the light source is switching. Watching this video you should have a better understanding why it is so hard to film this illusion. To get a good quality video basically two things have to be perfect. The frequency at which the water droplets are falling and the frequency at which the light source is switching. And now one last time I will show you my best attempt. Please feel free to like and share this video in case if you found it interesting and subscribe for more of my content. Cheers guys, bye.